Hello there. In this video, we're going to introduce the idea of functions, which is a very, very useful tool and very commonly used tool in any programming language that is used to sort of encapsulate a series of uh, algorithms or executions that you may want to use over and over again, or maybe you want to use this execution in other programs as well, but you don't want to rewrite the code for that actual algorithm. So functions are a very easy way to sort of save uh, this type of code. Um, but before we go into the discussion of functions and how they sort of run, let us consider a basic problem that we're sort of going to implement in terms of a function. Uh, so let's consider like exponentiation, uh, where you multiply something by itself a certain amount of times. For example, if I say 4 cubed, what is that going to be equal to? Well, that's just going to be 4 times 4 times 4, which is the same as 16 times 4, which people can find that to be equal to 64. And if I say, okay, what about 4 to the power of 7? Well, that's just going to be equal to 4 times 4 times 4. 4, 5, 6, and 7, and that's going to be equal to something, right? So how can we iterate this process or write a code uh, to calculate the powers of a number uh, to an integer power? Uh, so what we can do, let us assume we want to find, you know, what is 4 cubed equal to? Well, we can say, okay, let a be equal to 4 and let n be equal to 3, for example. And then we can say, okay, we're going to take a and we're going to let that be equal to a uh, times itself. So here, a is originally defined to be equal to 4. So 4 times 4 is going to be equal to 16. So a is going to go to the value of 16 after this loop. So what if we do that again? Well, if we do that again, then that's going to be a times a. Um, but that's going to be equal to a is going to go to, well, whatever the value of a is in this case, and that's going to be 16 times 16. So that's not really going to work because that's definitely going to be bigger than 64. Uh, so what else can we do? Well, we can save this value of a. Um, so we can just multiply by this value of a each time. And we can define this product value uh, to be equal to 1 uh, to begin. And then we can say, okay, so the product is going to be equal to a times uh, the product value. So once we do this, what do we have? Well, that's going to be 4 times 1, which is going to be equal to 4. So what if we do this again? So product is going to be equal to a times product. So what is that going to do? Well, that's going to be equal to 4 times the product value. Uh, which currently is equal to 4, so that's going to be 16. And then the product value is going to be equal to a times product, and that's going to be equal to what? So a is defined to be equal to 4, the product is going to be 16, so that's going to come out to 64. So we can call this, say, this is going to be iteration k is equal to 1, this is going to be k is equal to 2, and this is going to be k is equal to 3, which is actually the same thing as the power of n. Uh, for which we have already defined, right? And we can uh, define this to be equal to say b, uh, to sort of be consistent with some notations. Uh, so this is going to calculate a to the power of b, where b is an integer, and a is otherwise, right? So this is pretty much gonna be what we want to write. So we can write a for loop for that, right? Uh, so for the value of a, this is can, can be pretty much anything, so we'll just call it a float. So float a, and then we'll define an integer b. Right? We'll also define the product, uh, which is going to be 1, so that's going to be a float as well, since we're multiplying a bunch of floats. Uh, so float uh, product is going to be equal to 1. And then we can write a for loop that sort of copies exactly what we have going on here. So for int k is equal to 1, we want k to be uh, less than or equal to n. Once it's above n, we want that to stop. k plus plus. And what do we want this to be? So product is going to be equal to a times product. And then we're going to uh, output the value there. So let us bring in our value. So what is a equal to? Uh, so we're going to cn that value of a. 
uh, we want to know what b is equal to, and we want this to be an integer, of course. C and b. And then we can say, okay, now that should be b. And then c out product a to the b is equal to, and then we can see out product there. And then we can see in some value uh, to sort of prevent this program from closing once it does what we want. So let's just make sure this does what we want it to do. So let uh, a be 4, let b be 3, and that gives us uh, 4 to the power of 3 is equal to 64. Uh, let's just do another one. For example, uh, 2 to the power of 4. That's going to be equal to 16 as well. So everything seems to be uh, working fairly accurately. So we can sort of uh, delete the pseudocode algorithm uh, since we have it working. So what we can do is we can write a function that actually does this for us outside of this main function. So let us create a function that does this. So we're going to go in between the using namespace std line and the int main function. And we're going to create a new function and we're going to call this function, uh, say, integer power. Uh, so what type of answer is this product? So we're defining the product to be a float. So this is the type that we will return to the user. So since we're going to be returning a float, we need to say, okay, float n, and then we're going to call it int power. So we're going to need two numbers as an input for this function. Two numbers a, so a can be a float, and we also need an integer b. That's going to be the power that we want to return. So uh, if you do this, uh, a and b are already defined to be uh, floats and integers respectively. So we just need to define uh, this product value. Prod is equal to one. And that's going to be what we're going to return to the user once we calculate this loop. So we can actually take this loop and just post it here inside this function because that's not going to change. And this will calculate what we want. So here, we don't need to do this anymore. So we can just see out the value of a to the power b. So instead of prod, which now does not exist, so we're going to delete that. So this is going to be equal to n times, what do we name our function? n int power. We're going to do a and b as the parameters. And this should do the same exact thing. So let's just make sure this actually uh, does what we want. So a so 3 to the power of 4 is going to be 81. As we already know, that should be uh, the same because 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 9 is 81. So that's OK. All right, so let's just do just a couple exercises just to you know see how this is going to work. So let us assume I want to calculate uh, for example, 1 squared plus 2 cubed plus 3 to the 4th plus 4 to the 5th. Like, how can I display that? So, uh, we don't need these values here. So, float uh, result. So, result is going to be equal to n int power 1 to the power of 2 plus n int power 2 to the power of 3 plus n int power 3 to the power of 4 plus n int power 4 to the power of 5. And then we can see out the value of uh, the result. Result is equal to, and then see out res. Uh, you can do this whole entire thing in here, but it just doesn't look that clean. Uh, and then we can sort of, uh, you know, just call that there. So this, 1114, is actually the correct answer. If you want to do that by hand, just to verify that, um, I'm uh, more than welcome to uh, invite that to you. But this is pretty much a basic introduction to functions and how you can use this type of thing over and over again if you don't want to write it in this code or maybe you want to use this in other functions as well. And we'll do more examples of functions, several of them, in the upcoming videos.